Hi, my name is David Common. I'm a wildlife photographer here in Thailand. I photograph birds, sometimes in bright light, sometimes in dim light at dusk or dawn. Birds by the seashore, birds in land in the jungles like Gengo Chan. Stationary birds or birds in flight, which were much more difficult. I photographed many different birds of different colours, from the largest right down to the smallest. Colourful birds of all different colours and types. I photographed endangered species, mammals as well as birds, and also those which we perceive as dangerous. Mammals, reptiles, insects. I photographed the ones that everybody loves. The ones that people are kind of divided about and those which the majority dislike. I love photographing wildlife and I love being out in wildlife. But today, on this long weekend, I'm at home. This is Sunflower, so named by my daughter Iona. You may be wondering why a little brown bird is called Sunflower, but you will become self-apparent when you see the parents shortly. Sunflower is a yellow vented bulbul. Sunflower is not very old, but Sunflower's sibling decided to try to fly earlier this morning. Sunflower is much smaller than the sibling. Sunflower is still in two minds about leaving the nest. This is one of Sunflower's parents. Sunflower's parents think that it's time for Sunflower to leave the nest. And they're quite anxious for him or her, I'm not sure, to fly. I don't think Sunflower is quite ready to fly. And I don't think Sunflower thinks that Sunflower is ready to fly either. However, the parents are insistent and they've been spending the last couple of hours flying back near to the nest and then flying off again, hoping to entice Sunflower out of the nest. Sunflower's really not sure. I'm not Sunflower's parent, but although I think that you should get your kids to get on with stuff in life, I don't think that Sunflower is quite ready to fly. Sunflower is also about half the size of let's call her her, of her sibling. Fortunately, Sunflower's parents have realised that in order for Sunflower to fly, Sunflower needs to be a bit bigger, and the only way that she's going to get bigger is by being fed more. So the parents have started bringing various tasty snacks, bits of squashed up caterpillars, cockroaches, some other stuff that I really can't work out what it is, back to the nest. Sometimes they eat it themselves, but hopefully Sunflower gets some of it. Seeing all that gourmet cuisine was making me hungry, and it was past midday, so I decided to head in and eat my food. I left the camera out there hoping that I could get some shots of the parents coming back to the nest. The parents were, again, eager to get Sunflower out. Um, but fortunately, as I went in, Sunflower was still on the top of the nest, which, as we'll see later, is on top of Pidakon, a mask. I watched from the inside to make sure that Sunflower didn't fall out the nest. And when I went back out, Sunflower was still on the top of the, uh, the nest, or the top of the mask, and still being fed, a bit more successfully, I think, this time. I think. It became apparent that very intelligently the parents were using the old dangling carrot technique, bringing a bit of food but then flying off uh, with some, hoping that Sunflower would then think, oh, I, I have to leave in order to get more food. Everybody seemed to be egging Sunflower on, even the dogs barking in the street seemed to be saying, go on, give it a go, give it a go. I still wasn't too sure. I sensed that this was going to be quite a long day waiting for Sunflower to jump. 
and hopefully fly. But as I say from the size, mm, I'm not confident. We've jumped out. And now you're on the floor. Where am I going to put you? Huh? Take you up to the balcony like Mummy did with your brother or sister. So there you are. Have you learned your lesson? It's great being confident and giving things a go, but you should be very careful attempting something which is bigger than you can manage, biting off more than you can chew. I'll put you back in the nest. So it's flown, but not very successfully. Just down onto the air, onto the driveway again. I moved Patchy before, I think she's asleep somewhere. Oh, it's just moved. It was really hot standing down there in the drive and there's quite a lot of noise uh, in the street. Uh, I was quite happy that sunflowers seemed to be content now to stay on the, the nest and hopefully she'd learn a lesson. What are you going to do now? Huh? I'll have to help you up won't I? So, here we are again. Hmm. Y you're welcome. Are you going to sit tight for a while? Get a bit more food in you, huh? Aye, aye, aye. There are over 30 different species of bulbul in Thailand. This one's the yellow vented bulbul, as you can see now. Both the male and female have a yellow vent uh, just underneath the, the butt, if you like, underneath the bum. The males and females are pretty similar, um, but the male has a bit of a higher crest on the top of its head. And it's like different coloration, a bit darker. There are a lot of bulbuls in Thailand which are well, common to say the least, and the yellow vented is uh, frequently seen around cities, parks, gardens, and even up, uh, in other areas as well. There are some much more beautiful bulbuls found in the forests, uh, and of course some pretty rare bulbuls. But the yellow vented bulbuls, they're still nice to see. They've got quite a lot of character, I would say. Standing out here in the heat, very good distance, waiting for that little one to fly, waiting for that little one to fly again. Uh, one of the parents nearby, I haven't fed it for about 10 minutes though, but it certainly is too small to fly, it attempted before, and uh, it just jumped out and fell on the ground, so with a lot of cats prowling around, including our Apache, uh, the best thing to do was to 
carefully lift it up, put it back into the nest. So it's back up there. It would have been pointless leaving it there in the corner of the floor because it couldn't have got any elevation it would have been able to fly. If it couldn't fly from above, it definitely couldn't fly from the, uh, from the ground. And as I say, this patch was in the driveway. Uh, she's just moved off into another house there. And I had to chase a big, horrible black, sorry, white male cat, which was sneaking around as well. So I'll stay on patrol here at the back of the car. Uh, I've got the camera set up there. And... Uh, the back of the car uh, is my little hide. Not so much as a hide because the birds might be worried by me and they're not bothered. I've been standing down at the bottom of the drive here for a while and they just keep coming back. They're just trying desperately to get it out. They're a bit impatient. Uh, but because the camera was in 100 degrees heat there, it was just heat was belting down on it. It was The recording time was limiting itself to like a minute each time and then stopping. So I was missing recording so now we can... Uh, it's all right, it's all right. He won't, he won't be in the blazing sun for half an hour like you were before. He's definitely not interested in flying again though, which is probably just as well because it's, it's not big and strong enough yet. Half this has the other one, I think, that flew, I Anna said. Maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but this one's tiny. Yellow vented bubbles eat a range of stuff, uh, as I said, caterpillars, beetles, uh, other insects, but also berries, bits and bobs like that. I've never seen them eating um, bees or anything like that, but I'm sure that they could manage them as well. These parents seem to have this plan of feeding the chick a little bit, checking the nest again, and almost from what I could see, attempting to kind of push the rear end of the chick further up, forcing it to fly. Now, the sibling had flown earlier in the day, uh, crash landed and my wife had put it up on the balcony and had flown off from there, hopefully into a tree or so we thought. And it seems this one was eager to uh, follow its sibling and the parents especially were eager for it to follow the sibling. As I've said many times, I could tell from the size that it wasn't quite ready to fly, especially after I picked it up. It was tiny and it didn't have any tail feathers. And whereas they can fly without tail feathers, they've got no real direction, they just have to bomb straight. This one had already proven that it was just capable of kind of making a parachute landing rather than flying forward or upwards. There really was quite a lot of noise in the street, uh, which didn't bother but the bulbos, but it's kind of affected the recording. That weird sound that you can hear there is uh, the neighbour's uh, water pump continually going on and off. And obviously the planes flying overhead, occasionally motorbikes and cars driving past, dogs barking. But fortunately, uh, not many cats. Of course, I did have one eye keeping toot, as they say. Um, looking for Patchy, our cat, who uh, hadn't been well the last week or so, and we're thinking of taking to the vets, and sure enough we did later that day. She was just lying down near the gate, but I had to keep an eye on her, because I thought if this one does jump down, and I don't get it quickly enough, she'll quickly forget that she's not very well. Generally, only at best 50% of chicks survive uh, in most of these small species. And these bulbuls had had two eggs. I remember last year there were two eggs as well. And unfortunately the first one flew out and was caught by a cat. Although that's like a fact of life, that was really sad to see, especially for my daughter Iona, when we watched the thing fly straight across the road, looked down and the cat just leapt up onto the gate and speared it. Sadly, however, the first sibling that we thought had flown away had suffered a similar fate, possibly from Patchy. And I found the poor little thing a couple of hours later. Anyway, back to Sunflower, who really looks like she's ready to jump. 
Now, that looked like a better attempt. The parents looking around, I was looking around because I've been looking for the lens. And I was hopeful, but then, ah, there she is. A bit further away from the nest this time, right next to the shoe cabinet. So it's flown, but not very successfully. Just down onto the air, uh, onto the driver again. I moved Patsy before, I think she's asleep somewhere. Oh, just moved. I decided to try a new strategy. Right, are you okay there? Huh? Are you okay now? I've moved you off the ground. Fell on the ground and I had to quickly lock the tripod there and um, grab Patchy who was who had spotted her from the grate and was on the air, the cat prowl. Patchy was none too happy about being picked up. Right little one. I'll have to stay and watch you though, won't I? I'll have to stay here in case you fly again. No other cats around. I your parents know that I'm trying to help here. Because you're struggling, aren't you? You want, you still want food. It's got its beak open there. It still wants food. It still just wants fed, like a baby. And they're trying to entice it out of the nest. Well, they've got it out now, of course. It was decided that it was best to take Patchy to the vet. And although this meant that I'd be away for an hour or so, and it was a bit longer actually, it meant that hopefully the bird would be safe. My wife would keep an eye on it. So I decided to put her back into her nest. This is the nest, and put it back where it was. However, when we got back from the vet a couple of hours later, without Patchy, because we left her there, I only spotted the little sunflower underneath the gate. Go. <laughs> right, listen. Listen to me. I'm going to put you back in the nest, and we're not going to be jumping out again, okay? Because you're jumping out, you're on the floor, you're in the gate there when we came back. Your parents aren't happy. You can't fly yet, you haven't got a tail. I'm going to put you back in the nest. And what you're going to do, you're going to stay in there for the night, okay? And your parents are hopefully going to feed you a little bit more, okay? All right? <laughs> I'm snapping the video. So I optimistically put her back in the nest. And sure enough, as soon as the sun was down, so was she. So this morning when I got up and came out for my uh, pre-sunrise bike ride, I was leaving the house then. He was, uh, it was sitting on the top of uh, Peter Corn on the edge where it had been yesterday. And when I came back, he or she had flown and the, the other ones weren't, the parents weren't uh, frantically around the driveway or in and out the garden too much. They flew back a couple of times as they do and then went to the nest because they, they forget that there's nothing in there anymore. Uh, but then I checked and it, sure enough it had gone and there's been nothing around the drive of the garden. So he looked, he or she looked uh, full of confidence this morning before sunrise, I came out in the half light. He was uh, up on the on the edge getting ready to, to fly. So hopefully he has, or she has, and hopefully he or she's safe. So thank you, Peter Gorn, for looking after them, even if one did not make it. We have buried it, I buried the other one this morning over there in a plant pot. Um, but there's the, um, there's the lovely little nest. Yellow vented baubles. 
We've had them at the house since we moved in. And they've come back and tried to nest either at the front or at the back, in the garden, or in things like the fantastic Peter Gone uh, for a few years now. Good luck to them. Hope it's flown away happily. It had been great to have such a lovely bonding experience with this little yellow vented bobo, especially on Macabucha Day. And of course, these birds are really special to me because it was yellow vented bulbuls that I first started photographing around my house a few years ago when I decided to take up photography again. And they really are what got me back into wildlife photography. <laughs>